Hey, hey, Disney fans, planners, and reluctant visitors. I'm Becky, and this is Touring Plans Teaches. This week, we have Walt Disney World Resorts Episode 202, where we'll be talking about the best buildings at every resort, as well as the most popular rooms at each resort. They're popular for a reason, and you might want to know what those reasons are to know if you should request the same rooms for your next stay. we got to start by talking about the math that we're using to get these insights for today. To determine the best building at each resort, we're looking at satisfaction scores. So anytime you take a trip to Walt Disney World, you can fill out a post-visit survey at touringplans.com, and you can, as part of that, put your room number in that survey. So then I can aggregate all of that data on the back end and figure out which rooms and buildings have the highest average satisfaction on a score from one to five. We don't do that for individual rooms just because our sample sizes get way too small, but when we look at it at a building level, then we can get some good information. For most popular rooms, we're actually looking at our room request tool, which is part of the room finder on touringplans.com, and we're seeing which rooms have been requested the most frequently by Touring Plans users. And there are many, many rooms that have gotten hundreds of requests, and we'll see why that is and see if we can see any themes across those rooms to help you make your request better. Let's kick things off by looking at our five value resorts to see their best buildings and most requested rooms. We're going to start off at All Star Sports. Uh, This is the cheapest of all the value resorts. And if you look, you can see both of the best buildings at All Star Sports are in the same section. Uh, Building 10 scores a little bit higher than Building 7. They're both in the touchdown section. So obviously, football is a highly satisfactory theme. At least that's what I think. Building 10 has an average satisfaction of 4.75, which is actually relatively high. That's pretty impressive for a value resort in general. Um, And a couple things that might make this true. There's no pool in between these two buildings. So compared to the rest of the all-star resort, it's more quiet. It's also really, really close to the lobby and to transportation, making everything really, really convenient. But if we flip over to the most requested room for All-Star Sports, it's actually not in either one of these high-scoring buildings. Our most requested room is room 6155, which is in building 6. And we're going to start to notice some themes even here. Uh, Room 6155 is a first-floor corner room, and it's actually the room that's closest to the main building and transportation of any other one on property for this resort. This means a couple things. It's one of the loudest rooms on property. It's right by the pool and by the lobby, so you've got a lot of people walking past. But if you can get past that, it's easily the most convenient. Now, it is a preferred room. That happens a lot at Valley Resorts. If you want to be close, you're going to have to pay that preferred cost. Uh, But the average satisfaction here is 4.33. That's pretty low for some of our most popular rooms, probably due to a lot of that noise. But if convenience is worth it for you, then this room isn't a bad idea. Let's move on and look at All-Star Movies next. Here we can see something pretty similar to All-Star Sports, and that's at All-Star Movies, our Toy Story-themed buildings have the highest satisfaction. Again, they're really close to the lobby and transportation, and they don't have a noisy pool in the middle of them, so our satisfaction scores here are pretty high. For building 10 specifically, the average is 4.65, so that's not as good as those touchdown buildings, still pretty high. If we look at our most requested room for all-star movies, it's in this highest rated building. So in this best building, which is building 10 and the Toy Story section, once again, it is a first floor corner room as close as you can get uh, to that main building and to transportation. Our average satisfaction here is 4.5, and it's a little bit quieter than you would get in that all-star sports room that's the most requested. We'll continue along with our last all-star, and this is all-star music. The best building here is building one, which is in the Calypso section, and it has an average satisfaction of 4.68. So if you see Calypso, it's really, really close to the main building and transportation. Unlike the other two all-star resorts, all-star music has sort of this tunnel of doom layout. Unless you're in the Calypso section, you're going to be really far away from everything. You have to walk through Calypso to get to it anyway. That means Calypso is going to be pretty loud, but at least if you're staying there, you're not going to have to walk a lot every day. 
And our most requested room at All Star Music is in one of the Calypso buildings. It's Calypso 0456. We actually don't have any satisfaction ratings from this room, even though it's the most requested. And it's not a corner room. It is on the first floor, but it's as close to the corner as you can get if you want a family suite. So family suites are one of the main reasons you might want to stay at All Star Music, since it's the only All Star that has those. Uh, and so this is a first floor almost corner room, and it's that family suite. It's going to be really loud because you're by the pool and the main building. And again, we don't have any satisfaction scores from there, so we don't know, once you stay there, how much you like it. Moving on up sort of the cost ladder of the value resorts, we have Pop Century next. At Pop Century, we see a really weird result. So Pop Century when I get the average satisfaction for every building, it actually has the lowest spread of any resort. So the highest, the best building, and the lowest, the worst building are really, really close together. They're like 0.17 apart. So no matter where you stay at Pop Century, differences aren't going to be that dramatic. And we've talked about this in previous videos, because when you're at Pop Century, you're either very close to the main building, or you're very close to the Skyliner. It's hard to get a sort of really poor location at Pop Century. But this result was really interesting to me because the best rated building is 1990s Building 8, which is actually the furthest from any of those things. So this is arguably sort of the least good location of any building on Pop Century. But it also means it's the most out of the way, so it's going to be more quiet. Our average satisfaction score here for Building 8 is 4.61. Um, you're still not going to have much of a walk to the Skyliner or the main building, especially if you cut through the parking lot, but a little odd that this one's coming out on top. If we look at our most requested room at Pop Century, it's actually in the 1970s section, and it's building 6113. 6113 has an average satisfaction score of 5.0, so this is perfect. Anyone that stays here has rated it as very satisfactory. Uh, and it's actually a standard room, but we call it a sneaky standard. You can see that it's at this corner, uh, which means that it it's a little further away from the main building, but all of the rooms on this leg of building six are preferred. And even though 6113 is on the opposite corner, it actually has a closer walk to the Skyliner and to the main building than a lot of those preferred rooms. So, so this is a really good value if you want to pay that standard rate and still have quick access to the Skyliner and to the main building. Finally, we're going to look at Art of Animation. Here the best building is Lion King, specifically building 6. It has an average satisfaction of 4.74. And it's immediately followed by the other Lion King building, which is building 10. There's no noisy pool in the middle of the Lion King buildings. And you've got a really quick walk to Animation Hall or the Skyliner if you need to go to either of those places. If you're staying at Art of Animation and you need a standard room, you're not staying in a family suite, building 7 is your best bet out of those Little Mermaid options. Speaking of building 7, our most requested room at Art of Animation is in that building. So it's Little Mermaid 7513. Once again, we've got a perfect 5.0 score for this room. It's a first floor corner room, so we're seeing that theme come up again and again. Uh, it's the closest standard room to the lobby and also to the Skyliner, and you've got a pretty nice view out of this room as well. So it's a good pick if you're staying Little Mermaid at Art of Animation. Next, let's talk about our moderate resorts. So for values, we saw that first floor corner rooms that were really close to the heart of the action were what was popular. I think we're going to start seeing a different theme emerge in the moderates and the deluxes. First, we've got Port Orleans French Quarter. So this is a relatively small resort. Doesn't really matter location-wise too much which building you pick. You're going to be close to the lobby and transportation no matter which building you're in. So here we see building six gets the highest satisfaction score, and its satisfaction score is 4.85. This is in the top five buildings across all of Walt Disney World. Really, really popular, really high satisfaction. The distance doesn't matter too much. It's still pretty close to the main building and transportation, but what you get here is a high proportion of river views, and river views at French Quarter are really popular, really calming, and so that leads to some of that increased satisfaction that you'll see. 
But, and here's where we sort of buck the trend and this acts more like a value than a moderate, our most requested room at French Quarter is 4127. It has an average satisfaction of 5.0, so it's perfect, and it's a first floor corner room. This qualifies as a garden view, but you can see even from this picture that right outside the door is the door to Sasagula. So you can go in and get your coffee and your breakfast in the morning literally steps away. This does mean that there is some increased noise because everyone's going to be walking past your room to get their coffee in the morning. Uh, but if you want convenient access to everything, this is the room for you at French Quarter. At Port Orleans Riverside, we have the exact opposite story. Huge, sprawling campus, uh, more than 20 buildings compared to the very few at French Quarter. So the building that you get placed in is going to have a big impact on your vacation and how much walking you're doing. The highest satisfaction building here is in Alligator Bayou, and it's building 14. It has an average satisfaction score of 4.75. It's right next to the main building, really quick walk to transportation, uh, but it's also pretty small. There are only 64 rooms in that whole building, so your chances of getting one are pretty slim. You might want to hedge your bets and request a few things around that area too. Our most requested room is sort of on the exact opposite side of the resort here. It's not an alligator bayou at all. It's room 9239. Its average satisfaction score is 5.0. This is an expensive room though. This is a royal room. So it has that princess theming. It's a second floor corner room. It's really, really quiet, has a beautiful water view. And relatively speaking, compared to the other royal rooms, it has a smaller walk to transportation and the lobby, still quite a hike though. Um, if you don't want a royal room because those are so expensive, your best bet is to request Alligator Bayou 1608. That's the most requested room that isn't a royal room at Port Orleans Riverside. We can move along to Caribbean Beach now. So this is one of the resorts that's increasing in satisfaction recently. So it's becoming more popular um, and more satisfying Thanks a lot to the addition of the Skyliner and those cool new transportation options at Caribbean Beach. The best building here is Jamaica 43. So way down here, uh, sort of at the southwest corner in this orientation. It has an average satisfaction score of 4.67. So in the grand scheme of things, this isn't really high, but it is the highest at Caribbean Beach. You have really quick access to one of the Skyliner options and access to a pool. You're really far away from the main building and other transportation as well. Our most requested room at Caribbean Beach isn't in the Jamaica section at all. It's actually in Aruba, and it's Aruba 5264. It has an average satisfaction score of 4.25, so again, not incredibly high. It's a second floor corner room. It's rated as a standard room, but it has some sneaky water views and again has really quick access to the Skyliner and a pool. You're also pretty close to the Riviera if you want to walk over there to have more dining options. So Aruba and Jamaica are both good bets if you want that Skyliner access. Coronado Springs is one that again bucked my guess of which building was going to win. I figured Grand Destino Tower would have the best satisfaction scores of any building, it's the newest, uh, has the fanciest rooms, you can get some fireworks views even at standard prices. But no, the best building here is Cabana's 8C, and it has an average satisfaction score of 4.81. So again, that's really, really high as far as an average goes. It has a really quick walk to the lobby and transportation. It's close to Grand Destino Tower if you want to explore in there and it essentially has its own quiet pool. That pool is further away than any other building, so you might be able to get it to yourself. If we look at the most requested room here though, it's not in 8C, it's actually in 8A, and it's room 8145. This is another one that has that perfect 5.0 average satisfaction. It's a first floor standard room, but you get that sneaky peek at water. And so we're seeing a theme here. A lot of what we're seeing at moderates and deluxes, those most requested rooms are the ones that get you better views than what they should, given their price. It's a really quick walk to transportation and you're steps away from the dig site pool. So if that's a big draw for you, and it is for a lot of families at Coronado Springs, this is a great room to request. 
Our last moderate is very different than all the others, and that's the cabins at Fort Wilderness. Uh, and so here we don't really have buildings, we have campsites and cabins, uh, but we do have loops, which are certain areas and parts of Fort Wilderness, which is again a really, really huge resort. The best area here is going to be the 100 loop, and it has an average satisfaction score of 4.90. The kicker here, though, is that there are only two cabins in the 100 loop. So your chances of getting one of those two, really, really low. Uh, but they're really great because they're right next to the main building, super easy access to transportation. If you can get something in the 100 loop, it's gonna blow any other site away. But since there are only two cabins, your other best bets are the 2500 loop and the 2300 loop. Not a surprise that our most requested cabin at Fort Wilderness is one of those 100 loop cabins. It's cabin 118, has an average satisfaction score of 4.83. Cabin 118 and cabin 120 are the two cabins in the 100 loop. 118 is wheelchair accessible, but is otherwise no different than any of the other cabins. It's going to be the very closest that you can get to the lobby and to transportation. And finally, we're going to look at our deluxe resorts. So we have eight of these to talk about. Four of them only have one main building, so all we're going to talk about there is the most requested rooms and some themes to help you figure out where within that building you might like to stay. But our first four, we do have specific buildings or wings of those buildings that you should look into. First is Animal Kingdom Lodge Jumbo House. So Animal Kingdom Lodge is split into Kidani and Jumbo, but our only deluxe rooms are going to be in Jumbo. Kidani's all DVC, so we'll talk about that another week. As you can see here, Jumbo has several different wings, and they call them trails. So the highest satisfaction that you're going to find is on the Zebra Trail. But the Zebra Trail is a really mixed bag. You could be almost half a mile away from the lobby or right up against it. You could have a savanna view or a loud pool view, but overall your average satisfaction is 4.7. But the room finder is going to be your real friend here to make sure that you don't end up way far away or somewhere that you don't want to be. Our most requested room actually isn't on that zebra trail though. It's room 3230, and it has an average satisfaction score of 5.0. Room 3230 is a sneaky savanna, so it's categorized as a standard view, but from all the pictures that we have from this room, you can easily tell that you've got a lot of animals in Savannah that you can see from your room. It's on the second floor, and it has really quick access to the lobby, transportation, dining. Um, but this is just one room, and there's actually a lot of rooms at Jumbo that qualify in the same sort of sneaky Savannah view and pretty close to transportation. This one's on the second floor, but as long as you request something that's on the second, third, or fourth, and has that room number ending in something from 210 to 230, you should be pretty good, you should get that Savannah view and still have the quick access to everything that you would want or need. Our next deluxe resort that we're gonna talk about is the Contemporary. And really there are only two main big buildings here. Uh, you've got the main tower and you've got the South Garden Wing. It's pretty unsurprising that the main tower wins out here. Its average satisfaction score is 4.74. Uh, it has superior access to basically everything. All your dining is going to be there. Your monorail station is within the main tower. It's the place to be, uh, but it's also the tale of two sides. You're either paying the cheapest rates on property uh, for those standard views, or you're paying the most expensive ones for the theme park view. All the middle is out in the South Garden Wing. And our most requested room here is in that South Garden Wing, and it's room 6123. This room has a perfect average satisfaction score, so it averages 5.0, and it's a first floor corner room in that South Garden Wing. So it's gonna cost you more than a standard room, which would be in that main tower, uh, but it's probably worth the upgrade for a couple of reasons. You can see fireworks in the electrical water pageant from this room. From inside the room, uh, you look between the main tower and Bay Lake Tower for fireworks, and you can see the electrical water pageant on the lake and the lagoon out there. It's also steps away from the beach and the pool, and it's not that far from the main building or transportation. So 6123, very, very popular and for good reason. Next, we've got the Polynesians, so we're sticking sort of on this monorail loop. 
Polynesian has a lot of buildings, lots of choices, and many of them have remarkably high satisfaction. But the winner here is Niue, and it has an average satisfaction score of 4.85. So if you look on this map, it's got almost the ideal location for anything that we could think up. It's got really quick access to two different pools, but it's not sitting right on top of either of them, so you don't get the noise issues that you would if you were right next to those pools. It's also steps away from the Great Ceremonial House and the monorail. Um, you're not far away from anything, but you've also you're also pretty isolated from the noise. So Neoe. Really, really, really great option. That being said, it's also very tiny. It has 22 rooms in the entire building. Um, so if you can't get something in Niue, your ne next best option is Hawaii, which has an average satisfaction score of 4.79. Our most requested room, though, isn't in either of those buildings. Uh, it's actually Samoa 3610, and this has an average satisfaction score of 5.0. It's a third floor corner room, and it has a pool slash marina view. So you're paying a little bit more for this, but you're not paying those theme park view prices. Here you've got very quick access to the pool, to the ferry, to the main building, um, but it does have increased noise because it's more right on top of that pool um, and close to the ferry dock where you're going to get those horns blowing at certain hours of the day. Um, but really nice and close. You can even get a peek at Magic Kingdom if you sort of crane your neck around your balcony. So Samoa 3610 at the Polynesian is our most requested. Our last deluxe resort on the monorail loop and our last one with multiple buildings to pick from is the Grand Floridian. The best building here, just like at the Contemporary, is the main building. Not a surprise, your dining options are there, close to your transportation. Average satisfaction score there is 4.79. So not sky high, definitely not bad though. Um, but if you don't want to be in that main building with sort of the hustle and bustle associated with that, your next best backup is going to be Sugar Loaf Key and it has an average satisfaction score of 4.77. So really close. If you don't want to be right in the middle of the action, go for Sugarloaf Key instead. Our most requested room isn't in either of those buildings again. It's actually in Conk Key, and it's room 7413. We don't have any satisfaction scores from this room, but it is the most requested at the Grand Floridian. It's in the middle of a fourth floor of Conk Key, it has a very quiet lagoon view, so you're paying a little bit more for that lagoon view, but it's actually really relaxing. You can see the monorail from there, and you're not too far away from anything. So if you want something a little bit removed, you can go and relax on your balcony at night and not hear the pools and the noise and the dining. That's a good room for you to request. Now we're going to start moving into our deluxe resorts that are all in one building, don't even have really good discernible areas that we can decide between. So we're only going to look at the most requested rooms at each of these four next resorts. The first one is Beach Club. So our most requested room at Beach Club is room 3681. It's got an average satisfaction score of 4.5. And it has this sort of sneaky pool view, but it's actually categorized as a standard room. We talked about in a previous video, standard rooms at Beach Club are typically like roof views, and you'll get a little bit of roof here too, but you get better view than you should get at this price category. It also has pretty convenient access to the lobby, which is good for a resort that's spread out within one building like Beach Club. It doesn't have any good transportation access, though. You're going to be having a hike to any transportation or park that you're trying to get to. If we go right next door over to the Yacht Club, our most requested room is room 4153. So this is another one we don't have satisfaction scores from, but it is the most requested. It's rated as a garden view, so that's slightly more expensive than a standard view. But you can see in the pictures here that you actually get glimpses of both the pool and Crescent Lake from this room. So you're getting that sort of sneaky upgrade in view. Um, that being said, it's not close at all to the lobby or to transportation. You're going to have a hike. It is pretty close to the boat dock, though. So if you want to take that boat over to Epcot or another resort, wherever else, you'll have quick access to that. Our next resort is Boardwalk Inn. So we're sort of closing out our Crescent Lake resort area here. And the most requested room at Boardwalk is 5279. This is another one we don't have satisfaction scores from. It's a fifth floor standard view, um, but for paying for a standard view, 
I would take that view of a lake and a resort and a pretty sunset any day. So really spectacular view for a standard room. But you're on the fifth floor, um, so that elevated, beautiful view is going to cost you some time waiting for elevators or doing a lot of stairs. Um, and you're not really close to the lobby or the pool or transportation. So you've got that trade-off. Really, really nice view, but you're going to walk for it every day. Our last resort, Dialux Resort, is Wilderness Lodge. And our most requested room here is 6046. Has an average satisfaction score of 5.0. So this is another one of our perfect score rooms. Uh, this one is a theme park view. So in a previous video, we talked about the sneaky standard views at Wilderness Lodge. This is not a sneaky one. So you are paying more money for that theme park view. But the view you get is actually a lot better than the theme park views at along the monorail loop. So still a pretty good value. It has a quick trip to the lobby and to the pool. Um, but my sneaky suggestion is that if you want a very similar view for a lot less price, room 4046, so it's two floors below this one, still has a very similar view, but you're paying that standard room price instead of the theme park view. So that's Becky's trick for the day. If you stuck with me through all of that, wow, I'm impressed. Good job. Thank you for sticking with it. Uh, let's talk about the themes from the various resort levels. We know that popular rooms to request are ones that are close to the lobby or transportation, especially at those bigger resorts, or rooms that have sort of those sneaky view upgrades. Savannah for a standard price, theme park for a standard price, a uh, lagoon for a garden price, whatever the case may be. So be on the lookout for those. You can find those either by watching this video or on the room finder by clicking through and trying to find pictures from rooms that you think would make you happy. Those locations don't necessarily equate to higher satisfaction though. For those, you'll want to look at those best building resorts so you can find a building that might yield higher satisfaction than just that specific room that's most popular. I appreciate you spending the time with me today. Next week, we're going to be back with information about DVC resorts. Lots of people have been asking, why do you keep leaving the DVC resorts out? Because they're a different beast. They have their own data. They have their own prices and complexities. So we'll start in with those next week. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk to you soon.